Hello, amateurs, and welcome back to our Six Nations series. And I've got Elko with me here again today. Elko, how are you? Hello, TT. I'm very well, thank you. Ready for this Six Nations to begin as soon as possible. Can't wait. Can't wait. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at the squad selection of the England rugby team. And uh, as we before we actually get into the details, Elko, where do you think they are at the moment following the World Cup? And what do you think Steve Borthwick will be hoping to achieve during this Six Nations? Well, it's an interesting one with these guys. Um, uh, look, he, he'll, he'll want to improve. He'll want to win. Um, obviously, um, he'll want to take the the great English rugby public with him. Um, but will he do that by changing the way his teams have traditionally played? Or, or will we see a bit of a change up? And, and looking at the squad, you'd like to think maybe there is a bit of a change up coming. Um, but we'll have to... We'll have to wait and see because I still have my doubts. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's an interesting conundrum based on <clears throat> how the English teams in the Premiership are playing at the moment because the teams that are playing well and, and, and winning and seem to be towards the top of the league are teams that are playing quite fast, attractive rugby, whereas some of yeah. the teams that are more traditionally England are, are not playing so well at the moment. So that could be... Could be interesting, and we'll look at the selections now uh, to see how that's reflected. Steve mm. Borthwick has picked thirty-six man squad, including seven uncapped players, which is the most we've looked at so far. So here, here are the forwards. Um, and uh, yeah, anything standing out for you, Elko? What are you thinking about the England forwards? Dan Cole, yes, love to see it. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, he was. People were set to writing him off, saying. You know, before World Cup, before going, he's got, you know shouldn't be in. Fair play, the the, the guys look, looked after his body. I'm delighted to see him, see him there. I mean, he he might get up to a, a serious um, amount of caps um, for, for sure. But he, you know, he's 36, so if you, if you're gonna pick him now, you probably you probably get out to 40. I think you know if he if he if he can if he can maintain scrumging and and, and keep that that scrum um, that scrum secure. So no, I love I love seeing him him there. Um, Jamie George at, at uh, being captain, I think, is a is a good call. Um, I think consistency, he, he's he's been the the one. I mean, they they relied on on him heavily at the World Cup. I think he was playing nearly eighty minutes every game. So, um, you know, stands stands to him. So, um, yeah, it's um, still a fairly abrasive um, pack, and um, my only sort of worry is is the. Um, well, there's a there's a reason for it, but the om, om, omission of of Alfie uh, Barbary, who's who's uh, looking at a potential ban from from the weekend, um, and and Borthwick said in in the press conference that that the reason was it, it, he didn't say it was, but one of the reasons might be because of the disciplinary. But I'd be I'd be a bit because um, I know listening to to another podcast, they were talking about um, how, how how Borthwick had said to him about. Um, he was doing everything right, but his kick chase, his work rate in kick chase wasn't good enough. And that scares the shit out of me because he, he, he is form player at the moment. He is unbelievable, right? And if you're not picking him because of his kick chase, that means there's going to be a lot of kick chase going on. Um, and that's a little bit, a bit of a scary, scary one for me, but, but hopefully not looking at the backs, which we'll get onto in a sec. Yeah. Picking up on some of the things you've said there, Jamie George, I would, I just, I'd love to play for him. Like if he was my captain, it would be brilliant. Like I, I, I want to be his mate as well. He just seems like such a, such a good bloke. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. both with name check cold as well uh, during the press conference and just sort of said how England's scrum was something like tenth best in the world uh, before he took over, and it's gone up several places since then. And and Dan Cole's probably a big reason for that. One one person. Well, it's, it's, it's quite a few big names missing from this squad. Some due to injuries, mm -hmm. like like George Martin. Sadly, like he would have. This was the time really for him to come in and cement that place in England's second row. I think. Uh, sadly, he's out injured. But then there's some other ones. You've mentioned Barbary already. Both Funapolas. Mako announced his retirement last week. I would imagine he had a chat with Steve Borthwick. Knew he wasn't going to be selected, and and so you know jumped before he was pushed, so to speak. Yeah. But then we're missing 
two other big players that have played a lot, Billy Vanapola and Carl Sinclair, who've both been told essentially they're not playing well enough at the moment. Um, and the other one that I think is a big, uh, or a big name is, is Zach Mercer, who hasn't played a huge amount for England, but his form in France, particularly in the last few years, has been outstanding. And he's worked really hard in the Gloucester shirt this year in a, in a losing battle in recent months. He hasn't stood out as such, but like his work rate is is ferocious. You know, he's he never ever stops trying to go forward. So it's yeah, it's an interesting one. There's a lot of a lot of close selections, I would say. Yeah, I I, I think you're. We are seeing um, the, the the strong selection policy of a of an opinionated, one-minded or strong-minded, should I say, coach. You know, uh, I, I would absolutely agree. I would say uh, Mako had the phone call and was told, see ya. Um, I think Billy and, and you and I spoke um, a lot about Billy and his performances in, in France and, and how poor we thought he was. Um, I haven't seen anything from him this year that makes me think he's he's excited and wants to get back. Um, and, um, you know, uh, and, and set, probably the same with Sinclair. I, don't think, I think he's been poor. Um, well, Bristol have been fairly poor. Um, so, yeah, I think you're seeing Borthwick's kind of his way or the highway sort of thing. And, and on Zach Mercer, you know, again, it's one of those ones where has has he has he st- has he tried to change his game to try and get selected for England? You know, has he has he changed his what he's what he's concentrating on, and therefore we're not seeing him you know, in his free-flowing best like he was at Bath and in France, where he was just playing and going for stuff. Um, it's an interesting one. Who knows? Who knows what's going on inside of that? I mean, it's tough behind a, a pack that's not playing particularly well um, in Gloucester. Um, but, but I think Borthwick is 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 so strong in, in, in his thoughts and what he considers uh, you know, the boxes that need to be ticked for, 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 for players to play in his team. And, and a lot of it seems to be around stats and and sort of you know what he's and his team are looking at um it's not about x factor i don't think um it, it you know uh although arguably he's he's picked um we'll talk about in a second someone with x factor in in the back line so it's and again this all goes back to my fear of if he is selecting with with that kind of money ball stat sort of side of things much like south africa do um what does that mean for their game plan? And does that mean that, you know, those stats that they're looking at equal a certain game plan? I think it probably does. Um, so I, I, it's a bit of a worry for the for going to Twickenham this year, what, what, what we'll see in terms of the style of play. Yeah, OK, I'm going to pick up one other player out of the forwards uh, from there as well. I saw first saw him play. I can't remember which Welsh province it was for, but it was before Exeter signed him. And this is Ethan Roots. And that day he just um, stood yeah. out as somebody who, who just he just whacks people like he just was the most physical player on the pitch. And in the Chiefs games that I've seen this season, he pretty much is for them as well. So I think that's a really interesting selection. Um, I'm not sure whether he's going to get picked uh, in the first couple of uh, match day squads, but I think he he's an up and comer and he sort of fits that profile of a real sort of bruising back rower that you I think every team needs. I think every team needs one of those, and he fits that profile perfectly. Yeah, he's he, he's he's some player, and I think he'll his style of play potentially could release some you know someone like a, a Don Brand to go and do do what he does best uh, if he's if he's allowed to. Um, but yeah, he, he. I'm trying to see. I did. I did write my notes where he'd been playing before. Um, I, th- I think it might have been Ospreys. Um, but um, yeah, like, yeah cl- clearly, so. yeah, cl- clearly playing well in, in, a, in an Exeter, Exeter team that that sort of is workmanlike and and, and doing okay. The other, the other two, uh, again, l- looking at sort of some of the new, newer players to come in. Um, who are playing well for me in the back row would be would, would be Tom Pearson, um, um, who who was at Irish obviously and then got picked up by by um, by Saints. Who's, who's I think he's he's an absolutely awesome player. Um, picks amazing lines. Um, again, probably a bit looser than 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 maybe we're, we're used to. But that's good, right? If he's in a the squad, then then hopefully that means they will look to to move the ball. He, he I think he's at his best when he's 
playing in broken play and, and, and running lines off a of 10. And then, and then his ex uh, teammate, teammate in um, Chandler Cunningham South. Uh, again, I, I saw both those boys play at Irish uh, uh, last season before they went under. Um, and um, he, he's another uh, bit in the Courtney Laws mould, you know, goes around popping people. Um, he's got he's got an enormous amount of under twenties caps. Um, so I'm I'm, I'm they're, they're two kids I think and really good in the line as well the two of them. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to seeing how how, how those two go. Whether they can, they can be in the same team at the same time I don't know. Um, depending on how, how they're going to play, but yeah, there's some there's some exciting um, young kids coming through for sure. Yeah, oh, some exciting young kids. I'm real. Go on. Sorry, mate. The other one. Sorry, uh, can we? When I, I thought I almost thought that Nick um, Ezekwe had retired, <laughs> but I hadn't seen him. And I was thinking, do you know what I mean? I was like, hang on. I saw his name, and I was like, oh, I just hadn't. I just in my brain, he just kind of flitted away. And he he had a, a very serious operation on his heart in in over the pre-season uh, um, over the summer last year, which I I hadn't even realised. Um, so I just did a bit of reading this afternoon. Yeah, so it's great to see him back. And I, I've always. I've always thought he's a, I mean, he's a great athlete, um, very much in the Saris mold. So looking forward to seeing him him getting back to it. Hopefully, um, he, he I think he's only got twelve caps. So obviously, he's he's had a tough time in international rugby with how he was treated by Eddie Jones. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's just interesting. I saw him and I was like, oh, he's oh, I thought he I thought he'd retired sort of thing. But good good to see him back and um, hope I hope he goes well. Yeah, and while we're talking about second rows, Ollie Chesham is in fantastic form at the moment as well. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah, so so physical, so big, just skilled, makes tackles like he's he's just a an amazing modern day second row. So mm. I'm sure he will have a big Six Nations as well. Let's now move on to the backs, and um, oh, let's start let's start with the one that's on everybody's lift uh, lips at the you moment. Pronou- you pronounce his name then. Oh, there we go. That's him, Manny, as uh, Steve Borthwick calls him. Mm. What, how, what do you make of it? I actually haven't seen a lot of him play at the moment, so I haven't got a fully rounded opinion. But people say he's a freak, freak of an athlete. Yeah, he's he's. Uh, I I, have, um, I haven't seen a lot. I've looked at a couple of highlight reels and and um, been following a bit with 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 what the Chiefs have been saying. I mean, clearly there's something about this kid, right? You know, you if England have gone out and got, and got him, and they they've obviously I don't know how they managed to con- not convince him, but to get him to go that way. Um, presumably, I would think it's around Borthwick recognizing that he'll he'll need to maybe not maybe have some time off because of his medical studies and things like that, and, and what they're going to how they're going to help him fit into the into the the systems with things like that. Whereas Gatlin may may not have been in, in a position to because their squad is so slim as we as we spoke about in another pod. Um, so, but he, he, yes, he is, he can break tackles, he can score, he has got X factor. Um, and you know, there's another England winger that we t- spoke about in the same vein over, over when, when, during the world cup, uh, who has now decided to go and play in, in France, um, after leaving London Irish in Arundale. Um, and you just, you just hope that again, going back to the way we play, there's no point picking this kid. If they're just going to kick the ball up in the air and he's going to chase and get frustrated, he's like, you know, you've got to give him the bloody ball. So, you know, the, there's there's green shoots there that, yes, Borthwick and his coaching staff are going to change. We're going to play a different way. Barrel's gone, so we can do a few bits and bobs. And I hope we do, because I think he could cut loose this kid. If, he, if He's a type of kid that on a one-on-one, he he will he'll score. And that's what that's what you want, right? Um, he'll always make, make game on. He'll always um, break a tackle. Uh, and from the bits I have seen, he's not afraid to to give it a go. You know, um, so I don't think they've told him to, to to tactically kick yet, and I hope they they don't. You know, um, let him play, let him be raw. Yeah, and he's he's in the squad at the expense of people like Max Malins, uh, Joe Thocken, a singer as well. And you know, I think Malins for me, like he's a, an amazing attacking talent. You know, just uh, in the mould of some like Will Jordan. You know, who, who a winger who can pass as well and create. Um, but his defence is just is not up to it as far as I'm concerned in international rugby certainly. And Joe Cock and a singer's had a decent season, 
but I still think he's just benefited from some good Bath play. I don't think anything that he's done has been particularly outstanding that makes me think he's any better now than he maybe was two or three years ago. So mm. I think I'm a fan of this selection. I think I think it makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think they had to. I think they had to bring him in, and and uh, but let's let's give the let's give the kid a chance. Um, and see, I heard Joe Cockersinger was was potentially going to the NFL. <laughs> How did you keep a straight well, face for that long? Um, um, the other, the other selection. Uh, well, the, yeah, one one of the uh, selections that I really like in this squad is that of Ben Spencer, who has been. I mean, I would have picked him. I think he's been my favourite English scrum half or the scrum half that I would pick for many years now. Um, and it's been yeah. a, a mystery to me why he hasn't been in squads. And he's playing really well again, as he always does. He's got the full package. You know, he, he can run past kick. And I, <laughs> I, I, th- I just think, for me, he would be my starting number nine. Yeah, I, I, think, I think he's a brilliant player. I, I just, I, again, it comes down to, I think, um, uh, personal... Uh, feelings, relationships, whatever around certain coaches and certain players that just doesn't just doesn't fit the mold um, for whatever reason. Um, he is he's he's a brilliant player. Um, I just I just hope it's not too late because you know he, he's I would have thought he was in peak form maybe two seasons ago, three seasons ago. Um, but, you know, and, and what a decision to leave to leave Saris and then go down to Bath and then, and then stay um, when he could have got back. So. I think he's awesome. I think he's he's um, he can he's so dangerous running from base as well, um, sniping, which I think is really important at international. Um, but but then you know his kicking and everything else. He, he's a, he's a real he's a real great all rounder. Um, be interesting to see what they do at nine because I think I think the fact that they've bought Danny Kerr in, um, who I'm a massive fan of. Um, leads me to believe that probably they're going to pick Marcus at, at 10 and try and keep that combination there. Um, and then and then it's a fight between between the, the, the two scrum halves and the squad. So um, I could be wrong. Um, on form, it's a tough one, isn't it? Um, all three are playing fairly well. And all three, well, yeah, all, all three are not, are not uh, a... Uh, you know, pass, kick, pass, kick, do what I'm told type of player. I think they all have the ability to go off piste when there is an opportunity, particularly Danny, if there's a gap or something that they can go and play. So, you know, that that, that could be good signs as well. Yeah, just going on to something else that we mentioned at the start of this conversation, the teams that are playing well at the moment in the premiership and that. Northampton Saints and they've been rewarded yeah. particularly in the back line here with yeah. what is it five four or five people I think and and they're all playing incredibly well which then brings me on to my next question on this baseline is who's going to be wearing the number 12 jersey uh because uh, I, I think Wall's really the only one that I would say is a natural 12 that plays his best rugby there uh but obviously there are other people that could wear it as well uh, Dingwall obviously also uncapped at the moment. What what do you think? Who do you think is going to be starting at twelve in the first game? I think it's a really tough one. Um, I think Dingwall has been quality playing really really well. Um, didn't know much about the kids to be honest, but he's 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 captained England under 18s and he's captained the under twenties at the World Cup. You know that's 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 good pedigree, isn't it? It's clearly coming through. He's a leader of of men as well. So I don't know. Um, I, th- I think that will be laid out in what happens over the next weeks in the training camp and and who they're going to pick a ten and how does that start to look, um, how quickly they can they can get some kind of relationship in there at, at twelve and thirteen and who's who's there um, and 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 Slade coming back in is is really interesting. I think it's a fascinating selection. Um, I was really surprised. Um, and I was surprised at Borthwick giving the reason why he's been selected. Not that I don't think he should be selected, but it's just a weird, you know, he he was questioned why he's slayed in. And it was, oh, well, you know, it's it's because of all his clutch plays and he, he's he's won the game for Exeter with the last kicks of the game um, and, and an interception um, the other week. And I was thinking... He was doing that before the World Cup selection. He was, <laughs> the press were going mad after going, he wins games for Exeter. What? So it's 
very weird. Um, I'm really glad he's in. I think he's 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 quality, and I think um, I think having him there just gives you something different in terms of getting the wingers the ball. Um, but yeah, what what are your thoughts on twelve? Then I'm 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 not sure. <clears throat> Well, I think, uh, well, it's, it's going to be a straight choice for me. He's going to go with the inexperienced Dingwall, who I think is an outstanding player, like a real glue type of player. He seems, Everybody else mm. seems to play well around him. You know what I mean? He doesn't necessarily stand out on his own, but he's just, you know, he's a real good facilitator. <clears throat> or he's going to have to move Ollie Lawrence in one, is what I would suggest is going to happen. But Lawrence plays yeah. typically plays his best rugby at 13, so that's 13, not yeah. ideal either. No. I think that's the big question in the England backline. I mean, we'll see what happens. The other player I want to talk about, though, is George Furbank. And I think we're seeing Furbank 2.0 at the moment. I think he's gone on to another level this season. I, I think he's playing really outstandingly well. Playing as he's, well, he's played fly half a couple of times for, for Saints mm -hmm. and stepping in as a second receiver from fullback. But even more than that, like his defence, like his physicality, like his drive, I think he's just... He's, he's gone on another 20% to the player he was before this season. And it's going to be tough for him, I think, maybe to get a starting spot. But I think he may well be wearing a, the number 23 jersey and, and being a very good, versatile um, replacement. Well, so, so you'd, you would, um, you'd pick Freddie Stewart ahead of him then? I think I probably would still at the moment, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, it goes back to then. You know, how is how, how are England going to play? Um, I mean, there's an argument to say you pick all you pick all the Saints in the back line. It really is, yeah, yeah. You know, because they're playing. So, and they're, it's really great to watch as well. Um, and then you kind of fill in in around that. Oh, I don't know. It's because um, otherwise he's going to go back and it's going to be a, a mismatch. Uh, it, it'll be interesting. I, I think. I hope that. Uh, he's his he and his coaches are open to what happens in the first few sessions, and let's see what what beds down. But it'll be it's kind of reading the squad. It reminded me back of the sort of the nineties and um sort of you know there there's there's spines of teams, but it's quite a lot of te different teams there. It's quite nice to see as opposed to you know eighteen Saracens players sort of thing. It's it there's and there's all these leaders coming through where guys have played or captained under twenties and you know had two stints of under twenties. There's it's quite a well balanced squad, I think, um, as long as they, they can play. So yeah, I, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. The selection's gonna be really interesting. I I would I'd go with all the Saints and just let them play. Yeah, I'm I'm generally quite excited about this England squad. I think. I'm not sure whether it's going to transfer into results at the moment, but I, I'm excited about the makeup of it and where it looks like it's going. Uh, so let's bring that to a close then. Like, how do we think they're going to, do we, do we think they're going to change their game plan based on this squad, Alco? What do you think? I, I think they maybe will do a little bit. I think they maybe will transition into a slightly more free-flowing game. I wouldn't want to be playing cards against Borthwick, you know. Um, um Look, I hope I hope they do. I just I just don't know. I, um, I I, re I think they need to. I think they really really need to because I think the 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 way the way that that he wants to play, I think is to is to be like Leicester or South Africa and have and have massive dominance. And I just don't think England have got the players to do that. And if you're not picking Alfie Alfie Barbie, then you definitely don't have those players. If you know if we're looking at a how Jasper Visa did what he needed to do for for Borthwick's Leicester team. So, I think they need. I think they need to change. They've got the players to change. Why on earth would they would they not? And and why not? Why not empower all these guys, particularly with with Farrell gone now? I think I think with that big personality gone, especially from training. Um, uh, um, and don't get me wrong. I'm a massive fan of his. Um, but I think with that gone, there's probably going to be more. Uh, capability of the players to express themselves in training and try new things, make mistakes, get on with it and 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 hopefully we'll see a whole a whole more exciting way of, of playing the game. But obviously the, you've you've also then got to play the percentages and be clever and play in the right places, of course. Um so it's getting that, that healthy the healthy mix and, and and playing a bit more like Saints are playing and um some some of the better teams uh, in Europe. 
Yeah. Jamie George, New England captain, has spoken about the incredible support they got during the World Cup and he wants that to come to Twickenham and he wants to, the, the team to infuse that within the Twickenham crowd. So if he's influencing that as captain as well and this sort of squad selection, particularly in the backs, seems to sort of back that up, then it could be an exciting time for England rugby this year. But what do you think at home? Is there anything we've missed out? Any players that you think we should have mentioned that, that might well play a pivotal role? Let us know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind and subscribe so you don't miss out on all the future episodes. Elko, thanks very much. JCT, speak soon. And to you at home, get out and play.